this is the Mac app version, not the iPad version. That's the Mac app version. So it's, 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 it's much more, it's more enhanced, I would imagine. It's much more enhanced, yeah, because on the iPad we have the iOS that does not allow you to do yeah. the same thing. Uh, yeah, once uh, there are a couple of features that are completely hidden, like as soon as you start typing, the title bar goes away. Okay. Uh, there's many things that are just not possible because, uh, like I mentioned quickly, on the iPad, you have your fingers and your direct interaction uh, with what you see. Uh, it's very plump, though. It's like if you had the same interaction, it would be like a giant mouse. Sign like this, right? Where I'm interacting. So it has its own difficulties, but it's it's very helpful to start with a mobile application because it forces you to think about the, the, the most uh, relevant uh, information architecture you come up with. And then the, the challenges here were that desktop applications are much more controlled, they're much more defined, there are much more conditions that you have to think about. One thing, for instance, is when you when you write a sentence. You write the sentence, uh, and then you know how do you get, how do you blind out the sentence? If here you blind it out, it's completely shocking. It's like, oh, I deleted what I did. Right? If you do it here as well, it's it's, it's very uncool because often you 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 hit full stop and then space and then oh, it's gone. No, I wanted to look at it right to be able to move forward. So and sometimes you have a situation where you just we just play around with the keys, so here it doesn't happen either. It only happens if you, if you have a capital key, because then it's clear to start doing the sentence. So these little, little things, how does it fade out? Uh, what happens, for instance, if you scroll? Uh, if you scroll here and it's all this great, it's really annoying, so you have to blind in the text when you scroll, so you can see where you're scrolling. So these things uh, are particularities that you need to think about when you do best for that. Much, much more delicate than iPads. Sales wise, so they have more units of bonuses. This is still early compared to the iPad one. The iPad one is quite successful. This is not out yet. Oh, this is okay. the first time I show it really in real life. iPad was already out. No, no, this is not out. No, this is not out. Um, I, I hope it's going to be more successful because uh, it costs much more money to build. <laughs> And I hope it's more successful because more people have an iPad than I have. And I hope it's going to be more successful because the sales from the internet to the iPad, that's really difficult. Because the chance that somebody finds your app with an iPad is very low since there are so few iPads. So most people will find it with either cell phone or more likely with a you know, desktop browser, especially the rest. And then you, know, you say, oh, that's a nice app, but I'm not going to buy it now because I have to download it and make it an egg. That's so I hope this is going to be an easier step. I can't complain because we sell enough. But uh, yeah, it's going to be another study case. I don't know, maybe it's going to be only fade. I'm a big fan of the iPad. Thank you, sir. Also, the connection to Dropbox is really good. Yeah, actually, it has its, it has its problems as well. Because the, the whole Dropbox integration is the framework that comes from Dropbox, and it's kind of sloppy. But we're going to improve it ourselves in the next uh, release. But yeah, most people don't know this because few people use Dropbox. <laughs> but uh, most people really, really like it. it seems. And there is this very active user base, I think up to 70% that download it, they use it actually, which is very nice. To see. Hi. Um, the procedure to get to that icon for the talk. Yeah, I think it was, it's interesting to look at it because it's the name is brighter, but in the, in the icon there is no W, and it's kind of taking out also the only letter which could be there. Yeah. Is there anything interesting to say about it? Actually, that's a blue cursor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the blue cursor was the element in the application that cost most. It forced us to reprogram the whole rendering system because you know the NS text view, which is the technical element that where you can generate text, that comes with OS 10, only allows you one pixel press. 
And that's one thing I've always been away from it. It's not on my nerves with text and things, except that you have to see submission of every person. And here you can find it directly, so you don't spend time with that. And I was, I was really, I was really dictatorial telling my program, I don't care if it takes half a year more. This thing is going to happen to the person. Maybe the iOS is going to introduce a blue curve, the, the, the OS line or the next curve is going to introduce a blue curve like the iOS. And then it's going to be really painful, but I hope then we've sort of made it in the so, so. <laughs> so yeah, we, we use this also because we said we don't want another W, we don't want another pen with paper, because that's precisely what it's not. Okay. I know that icons should be iconographic, but I feel that using the paper metaphor for it would be completely opposite to what we wanted, which is the first uh, digital typewriter that, or is his name, the actual uh, working title was, was writing machine, which is still something I like a lot. Uh, but we can use it because the springboard uh, on the iPad wouldn't allow us to use such a long name. So yeah, we changed it to Writer, which is a more practical, almost unbranded name. The only brand element we use is to put our IA in front of it, which is not a conscious decision. We were forced to because someone else had stolen the word from the Writer app name in the, in the store. And another question, uh, it's more like uh, input, like for, um, since you, you came this far with uh, simplifying, uh, I, like, I, like to think, I like to know what you think about the smileys and all the kind of things like icons, which actually started from the telephones and all the kind of symptoms, but now basically most of the softwares or places on web, they replace those signs to other icons or JPEGs or GIFs, yeah. and that like some might be also cute, some might be funny, some some very sloppy. So I think it's interesting. I don't know if you have an idea or something about it. like you came this far, and it's, I I think also here they might look even nicer. Yeah. Yeah. Not not the uh, JPEGs, but just uh, basic on the basic ones that they go. That's that's not what happened. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, so my personal opinion on smiles, first of all, is I, I like only one smiley, <clears throat> which is the one that's my okay. so Two eyes and a smile. Yeah. I don't know that. I think that's up to you. I like that one because it's nice. Um, oh, you can see all my private pictures here. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not single anymore. Um, yeah, so smileys, I, I like the Thomas one. One that just smiles. Whenever I see this, I'm like, you want to get away with something and you're not. There's always like, whenever we see this smiling, it's like someone that has, you know, something in the back of his mind. It's like he tries to get away with something, but that's just my opinion. Then for the for the, for the yellow ridiculous emoji style smiling, I think that it's a shame because the smile. Um, Smiley face as such. It's very nice. Sometimes you need to say, hey, I'm cool. I'm not I'm not trying to be an asshole here. It's just I'm just making a joke or I'm in a good mood. I'm writing this in a good mood. And for a communication channel where you can't see the person, you can't see their voice, and that happens really quickly, where you quickly write nonsense, where even the iPhone can change stuff. So you write something really nasty and you didn't intend to. Uh, you know, in, in, in a medium where there's so much miscommunication on the basic intent, good or bad, it's actually good to have a smile. And it's nice to keep it in the same tone as the rest of the text. And not have a yellow smiley that says something like, oh look how, what I can do. That says something completely different that distracts you out of the flow of the text. So yeah, it's a shame to put these, these um, That's my personal opinion. Very much a matter of text if you like emoji. <laughs> don't, don't, don't feel bad. I don't really like it. I live in a country where you use that stuff all the time, it really gets a good hurt because it's like emoji that moves and I don't know what it means. <laughs> no, I actually like that uh, there's more creativity with those limits. Like when you get out to have the yellow faces, you kind of forget that you can create extra ones. Yeah. Even just with the glyphs that you have from the basic form. But it's, it's quite helpful for the to say something, so you have to do that again. Yeah. Thank you.
weird when people observe me working is I look what people do with their hands when they sit from the electronic device because user interface design is not so much about what you see but what you do. So I, I count, you know, actions, I count how many times you have to play and I noticed that the less you use your mouse, the less actions you have. And you know, the basic principle of user interaction design is uh, minimize input, maximize output. So I don't care whether it's like an old model or a new model or whatever. I just care for a model that has less interactions. So it was a big step to find out just using the keyboard. It seems obvious now, but just using the keyboard is really important. Now, how can we do this? It was a massive problem. How can we just use the keyboard? I mean, that we're having all too many crazy shortcuts. Uh, and then I remember that, you know, actually I really like to use Markdown, but what I have decided about the Markdown is the chaos it creates. Uh, it, it looks quite nasty if you get a Markdown uh, format text. If you just, you know, help it a little bit by making type and bold and on the line. Actually, I want to have italics, but it doesn't exist in that form. So you have to wait until the fonts come down and take up the on the line. But basically, as always, what we do is we build a prototype in the uh, first prototype I had lost in the game. I don't think I have one here. It's very, very simple. Um, but figuring out all the details and then making a block for each. Uh, and then changing again and changing again with these little, little details, as I mentioned. You know, when does a sentence gray out? What happens when you scroll? Uh, where are these things? Uh, that takes a lot of testing. Testing it on users. Uh, there, I have a particular philosophy. I don't believe too much in testing with with end users, uh, especially if it's a you know thick product. I, I like to test it with both very very experienced people from all you know sorts of professions like architects, uh, typographers, also user interaction designers. So people that have an elevated sense for for design as well as for end users, of course, to make sure you don't design it just for for crazy people, um, and we tested it with, with you know, with people like Omani or or uh, Asa Raskin or Scott Thomas, uh, so people that are very experienced in the field, and you get awesome feedback. Why don't you do it like this? You get informed feedback. Uh, you don't always do what they say, but you see much deeper into the problem when you also get experienced people to use it. Now, not everybody can do that, but I found that. We can go for for iPad, and it's speaker learning, for example. They also see the details that normally users would see. Um, and they get also new input. And it's speaker learning, notice, for example, that N dash is like a hyphen in there. That's something I should have seen myself. Like, I'm not going to use this as long as the N dash is a hyphen. And of course, for the end user, that's not so important. But as always with typography, and it's, it's a very really common design. Actually, the design that the end user doesn't see. It. When you get design to be so refined that the end user doesn't see it, then it's really good. And they're professionals of course. It's testing, 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 and also having a community of really experienced people from all sorts of fields uh, that will help you if you're know, creating something. So, I hope it's successful. Thank you. Is how uh, typography of writing actually evolved. 
and uh, handwriting plays a big role in there. Um, I didn't say that I'm not freaks, you know. I'm kind of old and I look at my grey hair and I shouldn't really try, and which is, yeah, it's good that you try to see the pictures. Um, but as a priest I say, most people don't have a clue in how to, um, how to design writing professionals. Even designers, very, 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 very few designers, it's shocking how many designers have an idea, even a basic idea of screen um, And then you'd be talking about any losers, like people like my mother or my uncle, you know, they don't know how to do this. And they'd be completely desperate. Again, like in Microsoft Word, how big should the phone be to work at, you know, a standard reading distance with the screen? Uh, what do we do with the lead You know, this is quite a big lead there, you know, if you come from print. But for screen, actually, you need that kind of lead because of the resolution of the screen. It's something I've been doing for many years. And so I'm saying, don't worry about the shape of the letters. Just put all your thought into the writing. Use no thought for the program. That's why I say no formatting. Observing people also, you know, changing around forms and choosing this and choosing that and then losing all the motivation to write on trying to figure out how to configure the program leads to that. Now, of course, if you're a designer, you say, hey, no, I know exactly which font I want to write in. Um, I, I don't like slap serif, I don't like this typewriter feel of things, right, because my writing is uh, more revolutionary, I like to use a sunset or something, uh, I'm pretty sure really experienced screen designers would find, uh, you know, a format that works as well as this, but the, the idea behind this is to use a, a form that doesn't suggest that you're already done. So if you use a serif font, yeah, yeah, I really want to finish that, it's very important. If you use a serif font, it suggests like it's very pretty. You only need to edit a little bit, and it's finished. If you use a, a, a typewriter style font, then it's not too plump and ugly typewriter font. It's actually, many people wouldn't even notice it's a monospace because Nikki here, like this cover last year, uh, a typer does an amazing job at spacing letters uh, in a monotype font. And, uh, you know, as a priest, I just think it's really beautiful without being all too obviously designed for designers. No, I basically agree. I mean, not on the highest level because one of the things that, as I said, I'm not a visual designer. But I'm, I am very interested in the user. And if you, uh, I understand that fonts are very much related to emotions. And if I think about my mother or grandmother ever typing something on the computer, it's probably going to be a birthday uh, invitation. And writing that one in, in comic songs with my mother make, make her feel more happy when she's writing it. Uh, in a way that influences the thing that she's going to write as well. So in that way I was curious so why is it in the end that my mother was trying to write a birthday invitation probably want to edit from exam. Doesn't know how to do that, but it will help her anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not for birthday invitations. Like I said, when you do birthday invitations, you actually design it because your mother's not so much into writing birthday it's more about designing, making something nice for the family, which is cool. This is just about text, right? And yeah, I mean, your our mothers are not the absolute first target for this. It's actually journalists, bloggers, writers, copywriters. Uh, I one, one motivation to do this was when I bought a new camera, I never knew too much about photography. Lots of designers are bad at photography because they always make, you know, very cool, boring compositions instead of looking at the light. But I bought a new camera when my son was born because I figured, yeah, I might as well get a nice camera to get nice pictures even though I'm bad at it. And I noticed a massive difference in quality. And then I thought, why don't we have a writing tool that does the same thing as a, you know, uh, Panasonic GF1. Um, but the objective is at least amateur, you know, uh, for writing, you know, longer form text. 